So there's a bit of water damage here. It's kind of hard to see it on camera, but and this what I my house is actually a double wide bowl, and uh, it does have wood framing and all that. But they do skip um, on this in particular. This is this mobile home ceiling stuff. It's about as good as cardboard, really. And so I'm going to be ripping out this entire ceiling and redoing it. And uh, let me show you, I've got a spot in the front room that I'm going to be doing the same thing. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, I hope you're sitting down because it's a little scary. I see up here, this uh, will terrify you if you're living in the house. <laughs> These uh, roof trusses, believe it or not, they're made out of one by twos. And then they've got them connected with this panel. See this? Yeah, they made those. Those are one by twos. Very scary. This is what it looks like. See, and I'm going to do at least this section here. Probably just this. You know, I should do the entire ceiling eventually. I probably will, but um, I'm going to just. I'm doing it where I have to do it first. And this is another spot that had some water damage and this and that. So what you have to do though, if you have a house like this, you can't attach sheetrock to these things. They're just too wimpy. Uh, that's why they use this, this toy ceiling cardboard stuff. But what I'm going to have to do is run new joists, um, 2x6 joists along next to these and my 2x6 joists will hold the new sheetrock ceiling and these will continue to do what they do and hold up the roof hopefully. So what I'm, I'm going to do next is frame these up with 2x6s and uh, put more insulation either, maybe you can see here's, they've, here up here you can see there's not a lot of insulation. This is the part I'm not tearing out. Um, so i will either buy some insulation, well i end up buying some. I'll probably reuse part of what it, you know, maybe double it up or something like that and then I'll have to buy some new insulation for the rest of it. I got these plastic things on the seams here. And once you get them started, I'll just kind of pull right out. And I take my multi-tool and cut, see along the edge there, which works a little. You can use a knife. This was $20 at Harbor Freight. Makes the job a little easier. Um, you know, a real good one of these is about 150 bucks, but um, maybe I'll get one someday. But for this job, 20 bucks makes it easier. Yes. <laughs> these guys are out of the way now and now I'm going to take my fencing tool which if you don't know what a fencing tool is you'll want one when you see it okay. if you're putting up fence this is great it's got a hammer it's got a claw you can cut fencing with it you can pull staples out so it's a wonderful tool and especially for doing something like this because just uh, hammer it in there and pull these out and then I can come in with this part here and just grip the grip the staple it's hard to do this 
hammer and the tool at the same time, but right. Just pull them right out. They come right out. Pull these staples out, and then the panel comes right down. There you go. So we got to do the rest of them, and I'm home free. Now admit it. You're dying to rip your ceiling out too, but your yeah. wife just won't let you do it. New camera? <laughs> yes. So here you see is what has how it turned out. There's a joist right there. My new joist, here's the original truss. And here's my new joist next to it. Original truss, new joist next to it. Etc. So the new joists will um, fasten to the sheetrock. I did put some construction adhesive in a kind of a feeble attempt to uh, shore up the the toy joists that are scary. So it's certainly not going to hurt. I don't know if it'll help any, but it might help stiffen them up a little bit. I'm afraid to put any kind of nails, screws, or anything like that into them. For fear of splitting, splitting these one by twos. Now the next thing is to do the same in here. So I'll show you this when this one's done. Now one thing you've got to remember to do when you're doing joists like this is uh, to sight, you're probably not going to show up on camera, but sight down the top like this uh, because it's always going to be bowed a little bit or maybe a little more in one direction. You always want to have the bow so the curve of the bow is facing upwards. Very important, otherwise your joists are going to sag and uh, it'll ruin your life. Well, it's a little dark in here. It's nighttime. You can see what I've done here is uh, I went along and put some liquid nails construction adhesive uh, to these struts or to these trusses and then clamped them together. I don't know if it'll help. I uh, can't hurt them. I'm afraid to put any kind of nails or screws in there. The things are so flimsy. And then this one had actually bowed down a little bit. Uh, not too bad, but jacked it up a little bit um, and hopefully that'll hold together this definitely does stiffen them up a little bit it's kind of scary when Larry's up on the roof walking over here and you can see these things just kind of flex it's like man that's really the one thing you know this thing was built um, it's got wood framing and I've put a foundation in it and I gutted all that cheap mobile home paneling and put sheetrock everywhere but the one thing about it that's still pretty lame is these uh, these roof trusses. So I only bought this double wide because of the location. I've lived up on this mountain since the 70s. I got friends all around, etc. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't buy a double wide. I won't buy another one. But this one's actually in pretty good shape after all the work I've done. Replaced all the doors and windows inside and out the siding on the outside and gutted the inside so it's pretty good shape so here's what this is looking like I've gone ahead and put my insulation up here um, between the joists and I'm about to sheetrock the wall or the, I'm about to sheetrock the ceiling I've got this sheetrock hoist that I rented for $29 a day Quite a deal if you ask me. The sheetrock goes on there. Crank it up and it'll hold it up against the ceiling. Check this out. If you've ever done this by holding the sheetrock on your head, like I have many times, you put a little strip of 
2x4 along here and tuck this end in. And then you walk up on the ladder with the sheetrock on your head and you vicarious or precariously screw it or nail it in. I've done that many times. This is the way to go. I've never rented one of these, um, but this is the way to go. There's one at Harbor Freight. And I don't know, my brother told me that he, he does construction. He said that a friend of his got one and it didn't last very long. Of course, he's saying, you know, for doing what I'm doing, it might work. But um, I was kind of tempted to buy it, but I don't really have anywhere to put it when I'm done. It just sit around for years until I have another project or months or who knows <laughs> with me when I'll be doing this again. I don't know. Anyway, the point is, check this out. This is really nice. So now I'm just going to go up and screw it in, in place. Sweet. See, I've got my first coat of mud on, and I've sanded it, so I'm going to need at least one more coat, but I'm getting better at doing this, so maybe only one more. As you can see, I've been sanding it, my favorite part. Here's what it looks like, all painted, curtains. You know. Well, I think that'll do it for this time. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, have a good one and hope to see you next time. Take care. I don't want to write a love song. I don't need to stay and keep going.